no, actually, I probably mispronounced pendulum because my teacher might have, the one who originally taught me, the one of my dreams, the woman I wish to marry, and openly not my metaphysical teacher, of whom I made some for, <coughs> might not have taught me the correct name for it all. But a pendulum, or pendulum, is basically a weighted hanging thing. And how a pendulum works is pretty straightforward. You say a prayer to your God, your Heavenly Father and Divine Mother to protect you and to authorize the angels to answer you. At the same time, if you're a beginning practitioner, you may not get your faith fob to work that quickly or that, I don't want to say soundly, but in essence, sort of, in that a person who is a true practitioner can hurl and move, and he's not doing it, but his submission is, a six-foot chain in front of an organization to demonstrate the Holy Ghost of the Lord. But someone who's new to the practice may only get their faith fob to move a wee bit in one way or another. A faith fob is nothing like a Ouija board, and I'm a firm believer, like other psychics and other mediums and other oracles who are blessed by the Lord of old, that a Ouija board is not something you ever play with. The reason is that you are authorizing in that moment of time some form of spirit to move you physically. And while my angels and I definitely have an agreement about when they can do that for me, at the same time a faith fob and pendulum is not moving you. The angels of the Lord, the energies that surround us, in the spirit realm are moving a pendulum. Even Oprah did something with the pendulum with Deepak Chopra on her television show, probably in the mid 80s, of which her facial expressions were priceless enough to watch. And my guess is that it was more his energy moving the damn thing than hers, other than she might have been praying her ass off, and I think she mentioned this later in life, that they were both praying that it would work on television. But someone like me just does it every day. The point is that the Lord can show you your yes, and the angels may be allowed to show you your no. And these are the two directions that you first practice when you're learning the faith fob. Now, a faith fob can be something that is actually a technically made stone with on a chain called a pendulum. They come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and types of rocks, and every rock that the Lord has made has a special energetic property that has an impact on your mood or on your life and on the spirit realm in every way. They are also made of wood sometimes and they are made of metal at times. Sometimes you can even do things with plastic. And I once quipped that I had a classroom full of learners and one woman just couldn't get anything to move, even plastic, which is the lightest of the pendulums. And I realized why, because she didn't really have a faith practice. Now, you ask your angels to surround you with the white light of the Lord, and you ask that the Lord show you your yes and no. A faith fob can also be a heirloom necklace that, of course, has some sort of charm on it, and, the, of course, the weight of the chain is lighter than the charm. And, therefore, you have gravity holding the charm straight down, but you have the energy of the Lord, if he allows, to move that charm in a particular direction. Just like any sort of fulcrum situation, that pendulum might move counter, or clockwise or counterclockwise, to left and right, to up and down, or to the two diagonal directions. Or it might circle full round. The reality is that you will ask your angels to show you your yes, presuming that the Lord has authorized you to use a faith fob. Some people automatically have a good juju and they can do it fairly quickly. Other people may not have that juju because their faith is not in its proper space. The thing you have to learn about your angels is that they can and will lie to you. The other part about any faith practice of what you're trying to produce on a daily or semi-daily or semi-weekly basis 
just like reading any good book on the Lord, is that the satanic force can come around you. Using a pendulum will not access any Satan. It will not open any demon, but the Lord can use your mentality of what you want the answers to be when you ask questions about your life to basically lie to you. You see, part of the most fundamental principles of a practice of pendulum or faith fob is submission to the Lord. That's why you say things like, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, who loved me unconditionally, Lord Jesus, who died for me, thank you for the angels that surround me. I would appreciate if you would allow the angels, Lord, to answer my questions specifically today. Thank you for keeping the white light of the Lord's house around me and allowing me the answers I need so that I may live appropriately in my faith. And then you produce the questions. The first question, as I said, is you ask the Lord to show you your answer of yes. And you try to do that many times and you practice that regularly. Please show me my yes. Please show me my no. It will rarely change after that, unless you have an opposite practicing day with your angels, which can be kind of confusing at times, but they will do that with you if they need to do that if someone is observing you, to protect you in what you're learning from God. At the same time, you might be able to, after a period of time of being a novice, you might be able to add some additional words into your faith practice, such as the other directions that were not accessed in yes and no such as the word for have faith or the guidance to start to pray or have patience meaning don't speak yet because he's about to say what you're questioning in your mind and there can be other standard things of the faith practice of faith fobs which is pretty much of I don't know or I can't say from the angels meaning God has not authorized the answers If your pendulum moves straight down, when you're accustomed to it moving around, it generally means that there's a little bit of a war going on in the spirit realm, and it's a good time to stop. It is never wise to use your pendulum around supper time because that, as you know from films like City of Angels, where there's some fact in that concept of God, that the angels that protect you the most are off praying to the Lord's house at sunset. It's also never wise to use your faith fob when you're feeling depressed unless you are looking for the Lord to cheer you up through your conversation. I encourage people to practice that way for a good six months and a year before they try to move into more advanced levels. In my programs of Angels Around Us, there are seven levels of pendulum proficiency. And it depends on your abilities and it depends on God and what he guides you to do. At to what point then you get to move to the next level of learning and practicing and using the pendulum. Which is making a half pie chart with little slices of pizza pie, if you will, that allows you to put words in that chart and allow the pendulum to answer you. I personally believe, because of the book that I wrote on practicing pendulum, that the first set of pages that you need are the pages of the Bible, meaning that you have multiple charts filled with the books of the Bible and that you have a numbers chart that allows you to be guided by your angels to read a book or a chapter or a verse in the Bible. 